Not all dryers look the same, but all of them operate in the same manner through a combination of three main factors, airflow, heat, and drum rotation. In this video, we will address how these three factors work together, as well as potential problems you may encounter. When operating, the dryer uses a blower wheel to draw air in from the front or rear of the appliance. The air is heated and circulates through the clothes as the drum rotates. The hotter the air, the more effective it is at removing moisture from the clothes. You can expect an average load of clothes to take about 60 minutes to dry. For gas dryers, the air is heated by a burner and airflow is vital to its proper operation. To ensure your dryer has sufficient air to operate, it should be located in an open, well-ventilated area and not in a cramped closet or laundry room. For proper airflow, the rear of the appliance should be kept several inches away from the wall. If the airflow is poor, the flame will not be pulled through the burner housing properly. This can cause the high limit thermostat to heat up and switch off the voltage to the burner assembly. The thermostat will reset after it cools and the process will repeat. However, the dryer will take too long to dry because the heat is continually being shut off and the thermostat itself can become damaged. Some models will also have a thermal fuse on the blower housing. Poor airflow can cause this fuse to fail. If this happens, the dryer will not heat at all until the fuse is replaced. If functioning properly, the heated air is pulled evenly through the tumbling clothes and then through a lint screen. To maintain proper airflow, it's important to clean the lint screen after each load. The last stage of airflow is the exhaust stage. The heated air that has removed the moisture from the clothes must be vented to the outside of the home. An exhaust vent is used for this purpose. There are two types of venting material that can be used. Each has a different length limit. The best type to use is rigid venting, which is usually efficient up to 40 feet in length. However, be aware that any bend in the venting impedes airflow and reduces the length limit for efficient operation. For example, each 90 degree bend subtracts 8 feet from that 40 foot limit. The other type of venting you can use is semi-rigid. This type of material is usually efficient up to 20 feet in length. Again, any bend will impede airflow. A 90 degree bend will subtract 8 feet from the allowable 20 foot total. Use only rigid or semi-rigid venting. Any other material may increase the risk of fire as the lint in the vent could ignite during normal operation. Since an exhaust vent clogged with lint is the most common cause of restricted airflow, we recommend cleaning out the vent at least once a year. As we mentioned earlier, the air inside the dryer is heated by the burner. The burner is energized by a standard 120 volts of alternating current when the timer and heat setting are selected on the dryer control panel and the start switch is activated. The voltage passes through the cycling thermostat, the high limit thermostat, and the thermal fuse, if applicable to the model, on its way to the burner assembly. The voltage then travels through the flame sensor and the first gas valve coil before reaching the igniter. The igniter will begin to glow, and when it gets hot enough, the flame sensor will detect the heat and switch off, which diverts the current to the other gas valve coils. The coils then activate plungers in the gas valve, which allow gas to flow out into the burner housing. Since this happens very quickly, the igniter is still hot enough to ignite the gas, establishing a long blue flame with an occasional yellow tip at its end. To maintain the proper air temperature, the heat in the blower housing is monitored by the cycling thermostat. During normal operation, the air temperature should be between 120 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. When the air reaches the proper temperature for your dryer, the cycling thermostat will switch off the voltage to the burner assembly. The high limit thermostat and thermal fuse also monitor the air temperature. Again, if there is an airflow problem, the high limit thermostat may switch off the voltage to prevent damage to the dryer. Eventually, 
If the airflow problem is not corrected, the thermal fuse may fail and the dryer will not heat at all. In addition to the fuse and high limit thermostat, the igniter and flame sensor can also fail and prevent the dryer from heating. If your dryer does not heat, you should test all of these parts individually to determine if one of them has stopped functioning. The gas valve coils can also fail, but testing them can be inconclusive. If at any time during the drying process you observe the igniter glowing and shutting off without establishing a flame, then one or more of the gas valve coils are probably defective and will need to be replaced. Keep in mind the coils can fail several minutes into the drying cycle, which will result in the dryer taking too long to dry. As the blower wheel draws the air into the dryer and the burner assembly heats it, the drum is rotated by a drive belt. The belt goes around the entire drum and is looped onto a drive pulley on the motor which drives the belt and around an idler pulley which puts tension on the belt. The drum has baffles inside to lift and rotate the clothes, which is an important step in the process as it allows the heated air to dry the clothes evenly. The drum is supported by glides or rollers in the front and rollers or a bearing in the rear, depending on the model. Over time, the drum supports will wear out and the dryer may become noisy during use. If the drum is overloaded or if a support roller, glide, bearing or pulley fails, the belt may begin to slip. It can also fray and eventually break. When the belt breaks, you may hear the motor running but the drum will not rotate. On some models, a broken belt will activate a switch that prevents the motor from running. Airflow, heat, and drum rotation are all necessary for efficient dryer operation. And, as you can see, all three are interrelated. If you're experiencing a problem with your dryer, Repair Clinic has a solution. Enter the appliance's full model number in our website search engine for a complete list of compatible parts. Our site also has an extensive selection of instructional videos to assist you, covering topics like part testing, disassembly, and part replacement. At Repair Clinic, we make fixing things easy.